I'm Celeste Ng, and my book is Little Fires Everywhere. Shaker Heights was a, one of the first planned communities in the United States, and they planned everything from the layout of the roads to the colors of the houses. It is a real place, and I, I really grew up there. The suburbs, which we think of as being a sort of quintessentially American kind of place. Green lawns, parks, trees, kids riding their bikes, hopscotch on the sidewalk. Shaker Heights was all of those things. But I also, once I moved away from Shaker Heights, realized that there were a lot of things about that upbringing that were sort of quote unquote typical American and then some things that were really atypical, um, both for, for better and for worse. And I wanted to kind of tease apart that idea of what that American suburban life really was. This book is populated largely by teenagers. And I think it can be a tricky thing the further you get from teenagehood yourself to write a teen voice well. What is the secret to doing that? How did you do it? I wrote a lot of this book at the Cambridge Public Library, which is right next to Cambridge's public high school. And the teenagers from the high school would come to the library to do their work, to eat their lunch, they'd flirt with each other, they'd complain about their teachers, they'd do all that. And I'd sit there and kind of listen to them and watch them. And mostly what I thought was, oh, thank God I'm not a teenager anymore. <laughs> so the book begins with a fire. A beautiful house in the suburb has burned to the ground. You seem to be drawn to telling stories in which people find themselves in some sort of personal state of emergency. True? I think it is true, and I don't know what that says about me. I think I should probably consult my therapist or something. I always do want my books to talk about things that are important, but also to draw the reader in. And I feel like those moments of crises are really the sort of inflection points that, um, that really make the story run. They're sort of like the gas on which the, the engine of fiction turns. What is it about the mother-daughter relationship in particular that makes for good storytelling? Because you've come back to that again and again. We have a lot of expectations about what that relationship is supposed to be, that that is some kind of very special relationship, more so even than mother-son, maybe even more than father-son. We think about the mother as the caretaker and the sort of like emotional guardian of the family and that the daughter is theoretically being groomed to be that kind of person. But a lot of times um, things go haywire in that relationship, that the mother and daughter are not alike or they're too alike. Because we have such high expectations of it, I think that means that it's that much harder to actually achieve those expectations. Thank you so much for joining us, Celeste. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for joining us for A Word on Words. I'm Mary Laura Philpot. Keep reading reason that I love working in the coffee shop is that people go in there and they talk and as soon as they lower their voices I know they're going to talk about something interesting and so I just kind of lean in a little bit.